Hello everyone, let's take a look at the poem Waterfall by Loris Edmund. So a bit of background, Loris Edmund lived from 1924 till 2000 and she was from New Zealand. Now, the poem is about someone, a wife who is looking back at uh, a long relationship with her partner and reflecting on the nature of time and, and how a relationship can change over time. So it seems to be relevant then that Loris Edmund herself married in 1945 and remained married until 2000. So that's a 55-year marriage um, and, a, and, a, and a marriage that began at a young age. So she was 21 when it began. So, you know, she's she's had a very long relationship. So there seems to be some degree of autobiography here. And if not, she might at least be reflecting on her own experiences, okay? And her, and her marriage went through some turbulence, some difficult um, experiences together. So that seems to be relevant to the poem. So let's jump into the poem. So the poem deals with different aspects of the passage of time, one of which is the idea of accepting that time will pass, accepting that our time on earth will come to an end, but also accepting that a relationship will change and romantic love in its very nature will change. So I've picked out some key quotes that I think present these themes very nicely. The first one is line two and three, time's irreversible river that takes the jeweled arc of the waterfall in which I glimpse. So, firstly, the phrase in which I glimpse tells us that the speaker is looking into the river of time, okay, this metaphorical river of time. And that tells us that, you know, this, the speaker is preoccupied by this. The speaker is, you know, reflecting on the passing of time. So, that choice of metaphor is interesting. The metaphor of a river for the passing of time is an interesting one because to me it suggests that time is fluid. It might change pace of flow. And that's very true of time. You know, sometimes, um, you know, an hour long lesson can feel like a lifetime, but an hour with friends can go by in what feels like minutes. But the fact is it never stops flowing. So time is continuous. Now, I think that continuous flow is reflected in the structure of this stanza. Notice that only one of the lines before the final line ends with a punctuation mark. So we have this enjambment at the end of the first and second and third and fifth line. And what that does is it allows the line of poetry to flow into the next one and create a kind of fluidity of rhythm, a, con a continuity of rhythm. And that's called enjambment. And I think that reflects the kind of flow of the river and with it, the flow of the time. It's interesting that the part of the river that the speaker is looking into is a waterfall. The waterfall is the time at which the, the water is flowing quickest. You know, it's, it's falling vertically. It's, it's, so it's therefore flowing at its quickest. And therefore, perhaps it seems like time is moving more quickly than it has before. Then in the second stanza, the speaker seems to reflect on, the, on love and the person that they love. And they say, I do not dream that you, young again, might come to me. So they think about the idea of this person that they love, but they say, no, I don't dream that you're young again, which tells us that they seem to be content with how they their relationship is now. They, go, they get a kind of satisfaction from their love. The phrase love's green darkness is very interesting to me for two reasons. One, the color green has connotations of jealousy. So it might be an admission that a lover is capable of being jealous. Love is not perfect. Love is not without flaw. Furthermore, the image of darkness suggests that love might not be all perfect. 
it might not be all sunshine. And it might acknowledge some of the more difficult sides of love. And this is further done in the oxymoron astringent sweetness. Now, this is an oxymoron because the word astringent means bitter to the taste. And that's the opposite of sweet. So it's interesting that this phrase, these two opposing words are used together to create an oxymoron. And for me, what that shows is the two sides of love, the kind of beauty and affection of love, yes, but also some of its darker sides. So I think there's a kind of parallel or a kind of collaboration between the image of one, love's green, love's green darkness, and two, the oxymoron of astringent sweetness. Having a look at the second half of the poem, we see the kind of relationship that, that they have. And, and clearly the speaker takes great satisfaction from the relationship. And that's why she says, it is enough now to come into a room and find the kindness we have for each other. A very sweet moment in the poem. Now I'm drawn in the third line to the fact she says, calling it love. Now that tells us that it's not love. Or at least it's not the kind of love that is described in Hollywood or the kind of love that we might fantasize about when we're younger. But it's called love. Now, calling it love suggests that it's no, it's not love. However, it does seem that there's a there is a kind of contentment here. Look at this line at the end of the third stanza. To sit in the afternoons in mild conversation without nostalgia. Now, without nostalgia, nostalgia is um, the process of looking back at the past and thinking it was a better time. Okay, so that means to be nostalgic, but this couple are not nostalgic. They don't feel the need to look back at the past and think, well, that was a better time in our relationship. The image of the afternoon, well, it suggests if the day is a metaphor for their relationship together, we're kind of coming towards the evening, coming towards the end. But there's also something about the afternoon that seems remarkably moderate and not very exciting. You know, exciting things happen during the night time, you know, but the afternoon is a very peaceful and calm time of the day. And that seems to tell us about their relationship, right? Their life might not be that exciting, but nonetheless, they're not nostalgic. They seem to be happy with the, the way that their relationship is. And finally, I'll just reflect on this, this, this final image. She comes back to the image of the waterfall and she says, when you leave me, suddenly then I love you with a quick intensity, remembering that water falls fast and only once to the dark pool below. So this is a kind of really emphatic declaration of love and, and the speaker is saying that when they're left alone or when they when they're separated from the person they love they have a sudden feeling of love and that love is described with the phrase a quick intensity so clearly there is a strong strong feeling between these two people and what causes that feeling of love what causes that outburst of emotion is this final image the reminder that water, and remember that in this poem, water is time, the river is time. What causes this sudden outburst of emotion is the, is the, is the memory of the fact that they don't have long together, that water falls fast and only once to the dark pool below. So the dark pool below seems to be a euphemism for death. And a reminder that they might not have too much time left together. Now, like in the first stanza, enjambment is used to create this kind of flow and to, to build the pace of the poem. There's no stopping for punctuation. And therefore, it is a poem that you can read quickly and with pace. So the enjambment adds to the sense of the pace of time. 
as does the fricative alliteration in the words fools fast. So there's alliteration of the letter F, fools fast. This harsh, snappy sound also adds to the sense of the pace of time. And this final image of only once adds to the sense that there is only one life. And therefore, the speaker has learned to appreciate their partner, their love, and realize how integral a part in their life the subject has played. OK, so I think we've got some some complex but very good language analysis that we can be doing.